Hi, I'm Sabine Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Implication of Load Reflection in Tuned Wireless Power Transfer Systems Serious Serious Compared to Serious Parallel Connection. Please note that this is a ongoing tutorial following the ones that I've posted earlier which are found in my YouTube channel and I'm copying the links to the page of this video. Now wireless power transfer is based on having antennas, a transmitting antenna and a receiving antenna. There is a transmitter which is feeding the transmitter antenna and then the receiver is processing the power which is transferred through the magnetic flux. Here I'm showing the two antennas which are actually two coils and there is a common flux which is actually transferring the energy from the transmitter to the receiver and there is some flux which is locked around the transmitter antenna not common to the two and this fraction is related to the coupling coefficient which is smaller than one and this is the fraction of the magnetic flux which is not common to the two. It is a function of the distance, the farther are the antennas, the smaller will be K. Now the classical wireless power transfer design is around two antennas which are tuned. This is representing, this inductor is representing the transmitting antenna tuned to the capacitor, there is a receiving part tuned to the secondary capacitor and then we have these parasitic resistances which are actually the resistances primarily of the antenna, the wires of the antenna and then also at the receiving part we have these parasitic resistances. Now these two coils or these two inductors are connected by mutual inductance defined by k times the square root of these, the product of the inductances and I'm showing here the load as a resistor which is not correct from the practical point of view because uh, loads are, practical loads are really not resistors but it has been shown and it is very common to replace a nonlinear load like a rectifier with a battery or a DC to DC converter that might be here as an equivalent RAC so called and the basis for this replacement is having a resistor which is consuming the same power as this part here. So this is the classical series series connection because we have a series resonant, a series resonant. Now I've shown and it is well known uh, in in the literature and you can find it in the videos that I have mentioned that uh, you can describe the system of the series series connection as uh, two loops which are now independent because this dependent voltage source is representing the coupling and here this is a reflected load from the secondary from the receiving to the transmitting antenna this is the reflected load and in this case the efficiency is this part divided by the sum of, of the two and then this would be the efficiency say, of the uh, transmitting part and then if you would like to add the losses of the receiving part you have to multiply it to get the total efficiency. Now the power is related to the amount of energy which is absorbed by RL which is equal to the power absorbed by this imaginary reflected resistor. So this is the um, classical representation of the series series uh, connection with this reflected resistor here. Now I'm now going to discuss the series parallel connection which is also being used. In this case we have a series connection at the input, we have a parallel connection at the output and again we can analyze it by breaking this mutual inductance and replacing it by two dependent voltage sources 
One is J omega m, which is the mutual inductance I2, and the other one is J omega m I1. Now I'm assuming that these two are equal to simplify matters, and I'm also assuming, of course, that the uh, excitation frequency is equal to the resonance frequency of the two parts, which is the same. Now, in order to simplify the analysis, I am replacing this voltage source in series with the inductor with a current source, the value of which is J omega M1, this is this voltage, or voltage source divided by J omega LS here, and in parallel with this inductor. This will simplify matters. And also, in order to get nice expression without the fine detail, because I'm trying just to show the general behavior of the system rather than the very fine details, I'm going to neglect this RSS, which is the parasitic resistance at the secondary. Uh, otherwise, the expression are a little bit messy and it's very difficult to see uh, what's going on. So this is an approximation, of course. And here I'm just assuming that this resistance is equal to zero. Now, in this case, it's very easy now to analyze the circuit and to get the information we need. And I'm in particular interested in I2. This is this current here or this current here. Now, I2 is actually the current going into this branch because this now represents the uh, inductor here. So, if we are at resonance, the impedance of L in parallel to C is very high, so we see actually only RL, so the voltage is this current times RL, this current times L. This is the voltage here. If I divide it by J omega L, this would be the current going here. So if now I subtract this current from this current, this will give me I2, and here is the expression. So this is the source, original source, and this is now the part which goes into this uh, parallel representation of the inductor, and this is I2. So now we have this expression for I2, and I can plug it into this voltage source at the primary, at the transmitter side. Again, I'm assuming that these are resonance, and now since I have I2, I can plug it in. Assuming again that these inductors are equal, this is without losing actually any generality, just making the expressions uh, simple, I'm getting the J omega Mi2, which is this voltage source, is equal to J omega L K square I1, there is a expression here times I1, and then there is another expression, which is a real one, times I12. Now this actually can be translated into an inductor, which is fed by I1. Okay, so I can put here an inductor that is fed by I1. The value of the inductor would be minus L K square, and so this representation is equal to this expression here. Same thing goes for the uh, RL. I can represent this expression as a resistor, which is should be here K, squ K square RL, I'm sorry, there's a mistake here, and, and with the current of I1 passing through it. So we end up with this figure, which shows that the reflection of the load back to the primary or to the transmitting side ends up with a real resistor plus a inductor which is negative. Okay, so let's see what all this actually means. So in order to understand it better, let's assume first of all that K is 1. If K is 1, this means there is a good or 100% coupling between these two, so these are like, uh, so this is a actually a transformer, okay? So the equivalent circuit of this circuit for k equal to 1 will be something like this. We have the inductor, 
we have the capacitor and then we have the RL which is actually reflected here because this is a one-to-one -one transformer and of course we have uh, the resistor here the primary and the this should be RS primary and the capacitor so if I look at this then obviously because these two are in resonance I have here actually a capacitor resistor plus another resistor and this is for k equal to 1 okay k equal to 1 this is minus L which cancels out this L k is 1 we have RL exactly as we have it here we have the resistor capacitor and RL resistor capacitor and RL now what happens if k equal to 1 and the RL is going to infinity that is this one goes to infinity or here I should say goes to infinity in this case th this goes to infinity we have here actually a parallel resonant ideal parallel resonant circuit and therefore the impedance is uh, infinity so what we see here now if k is equal to 1 k is equal to 1 we have if k is equal to 1 these two cancel each other and then RL goes to infinity so he, here we have like a infinite impedance exactly as we have it here now what happens with k is equal to 0 k equal to 0 means that these have no mutual inductance the mutual inductance is 0 like there is no connection between these and we have only the primary okay if we have only the primary then we're going to have a resonant circuit here it is uh, these two are in resonance so in fact we should have just RSP the positive resistance of the primary so if k equal to 0 this is 0 this is 0 these are in resonance so we end up with this should be again this is the RSP we end up with this one only so we see that this is uh, makes sense makes sense although it like looks very uh, strange but it makes sense and now I'm going to compare this situation of the series parallel to the series series in the series parallel we have here this circuit in the series series we have only a resistive part so this means by the way that if k is between 1 and 0 some number then there's no cancellation here this is real but we have a impedance or inductor which is not the exact inductor for resonant with C sub P so we're running the circuit actually with a capacitive nature because the inductor is just too small so this is one difference between these two while here we are running the circuit at resonance and it's resistive and of course here one has to be very careful because uh, well it's the same thing here at resonance we, we might have a high current here so what about the efficiency well efficiency is uh, this resistance divided by the total resistance the uh, same thing goes here and we see here that now the efficiency really becomes large when RL is large while here the efficiency is becoming large when RL is small so this circuit is by nature more suitable for load resistors which are large while this one is more suitable for load resistors which are small so if we go over a k1 again while here if k equal to 1 we have a cancellation of these two and therefore we have this capacitor feeding this resistor so there is quite a bit of a difference between these two and uh, what I'm showing is that by this method of dependent sources we can very easily see what is really going on and actually analyze the circuit for given uh, resistances and for given parameters uh, of the design 
So this actually brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.